Hi. If you are a fan of American films, then you probably know Spike Lee, an out of bounds and controversial director known for his films regarding racial tension in the United States. Each one of his films opens with his trademark, a Spike Lee joint. Now, the pinnacle of Lee's work is considered to be his film, Do the Right Thing, a movie set in 80s Brooklyn in a majority black neighborhood where racial tensions between the neighborhood's black residents, the Italian pizza shop owners, the Korean shop owners, and the white policeman boil to an all-time high on a hot summer's day in New York City. A key character in this movie is Radio Rahim, the music-loving member of the community that constantly blasts public enemies fight the power on his boombox. The movie ends with his senseless death over a simple dispute. See, Radio Rahim and some friends want more black representation on the wall of the restaurant, while the Italian pizza shop owners want Radio Rahim to turn his boombox down. Somehow, this simple dispute ended in the senseless death of another black male. 25 years later, on another hot summer's day in New York City, another black male died the same senseless death that Radio Rahim did. After this individual's death in 2014, Spike Lee was able to make an effortless comparison in the similarities of these two deaths by splicing a video of them together. I'm minding my business. Please just leave me alone. I told you the last time. Please just leave me alone. Back up and get on that step. Okay. All he did was break up a fight. Back up. Back it up. The death of Radio Rahim and that of Eric Garner is eerily, strikingly, and disappointingly similar. The only difference is that Radio Rahim's death was based on the social state of the country 25 years ago. Knowing this, I would like to pose the question. Why is life still a Spike Lee joint today? Now, there are various answers to this question, the most common and vague being the usual institutional racism. But the answer I'd like to pose today is the term miseducation. Now, the simple definition of miseducation is to inform or teach wrongly. However, miseducation has a much more detrimental effect than this simple definition lets on. Miseducation is the combination of an incomprehensive and biased general education system, as well as a lack of self-education. It is present in all aspects of society, whether it be at school or the workplace or at home, but most detrimentally, it is present within our own minds and impedes both society and our individual psyches from functioning harmoniously. In the general education system, history is whitewashed. Literature often has one Eurocentric perspective, and rarely do we learn history where women and people of color are on the forefront. Most importantly though, we are taught misconceptions about history and society that impede our ability to understand our current social context. An example of a misconception that I would like to address today is our knowledge of the Civil War and President Abraham Lincoln, or as someone like to refer him to as, Honest Abe. Now according to our current general education system, Abraham Lincoln was an abolitionist president that wanted to free slaves for the good of society. Never often do we discuss that Abraham Lincoln did not in fact free all slaves with his Emancipation Proclamation, that he did indeed keep slaves within the border states of the Union to use against the Confederacy. In our general conversation about the Civil War, never often do we talk about how the United States did not just jump from emancipation to the liberation of slaves that in between there is this movement, or rather this program, 
where we were literally shipping black, former black slaves back to Africa as if it were that simple because they didn't want to integrate black Americans into white society, which is why the country Liberia exists today. Furthermore, we never often discuss how Abraham Lincoln, like the majority of white members of society at this time, wanted to see blacks in the lowest possible social, economic, and political state. A quotation from Abraham Lincoln himself. I have no purpose to introduce political and social equality between the white and black races. There is physical difference between the two which, in my judgment, will probably forever forbid their living together upon the footing of perfect equality. And inasmuch as it becomes a necessity that there must be a difference, I, as well as Judge Douglas, am in favor of the race to which I belong having the superior position. Another misconception that I would like to address is the idea that racism somehow ended at, at the end of the Civil Rights Movement. How can we say this is true when black women like myself are represented in images such as these today? You would think that this cartoon came from the Jim Crow era, but in fact, it was part of a larger comic book series that began in 2010, only six years ago. Overall, we have been miseducated by society to think that we are in a better place than we actually are. In reality, we have moved forward in some aspects. We have definitely moved backward in others, especially in our understanding of social issues, as well as our willingness to take initiative to fight them. One way we can see this lack of understanding is in examining the effect of miseducation on both majority and minority populations. Now, the effect of miseducation on majority populations is that there is a lack of understanding for minorities and their socio-political conditions. A lot of times this is not even intentional, but that is part of the danger of miseducation. This can be seen in the majority response to the civil rights movement versus the majority response to current racial tensions in the United States. During the civil rights movement, majority populations were shocked and emotionalized seeing the death of black individuals in Birmingham. Overall, there was some type of consensus that there were issues in the country regarding race. In this day and age, the death of black Americans is on replay. Thanks to technology, information and evidence on institutional disparities and widespread racism is evident. Yet, several individuals and groups, black, white, and everything in between, still believe that there somehow isn't a problem. There is controversy over groups such as Black Lives Matter with understanding neither for their necessity nor their justification in this current day and age. Peaceful protests in Ferguson are met with the National Guard. While a group of white men are able to take a federal building in Oregon with no police confrontation, airtime on the media, and an initiative by PETA to send food to these so-called rebels, all for the sake of their land when we all know whose land it was in the first place. I understand that there are varying opinions on these social incidents, which is why I would like to present an experiment showing the indisputable psychological effect of miseducation on all of society's members. This experiment was conducted with both black and white children. Now, children don't have political opinions. They're not thinking Trump or Bernie, and they don't even understand terms like miseducation. But the result of this experiment, which was conducted with a series of figures from white to black, with both black and white children who, got, who were asked to choose which one they would like to be, the majority of both black and white kids chose the white figure. The overall whitewashing of both society, but also our own minds, has taught us to believe that white is better. And this miseducation does not only affect different races, but also causes divide within races, known as colorism where those with lighter skin within a race are favored. This concept can be seen in the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide. Incidentally, Spike Lee also has a film about this concept, known as School Days, set in a historically black college and university in Atlanta, Georgia. Now within the film, there are two warring sororities, a dark-skinned and natural hair sorority versus a light-skinned and long and straight hair sorority. Spike Lee does this to illustrate the effect of miseducation overall, not on different races, but within different races. Carter G. Woodson discusses the psychological effect in his, novel, in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro. When you control a man's thinking, 
You do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefit. His education makes it necessary. Miseducating all people to believe that certain peoples are inferior keeps them in that inferior place socially, politically, economically, psychologically, which is why it needs to stop. Knowing this, think to yourself, do you want to be treated the way black Americans are in this society, whether psychologically, emotionally, or physically? And do not think of the anomalies like Beyonce or Dwayne Wade, because when it comes to this question, those individuals are anomalies. The answer should have been no, which means that while collectively we all are miseducated, we can start taking steps in dismantling this miseducation. The first part of the solution that I propose is general education reform. We need to teach history the way that it actually happened, from both the perspective of the winners, i.e. the colonialists and the imperialists, imper imperialists and the subjugationists, the ones who end up writing the history books in the first place, but also from the perspective of minorities, of the marginalized. The second and most important step in the solution is self-education. Before we can look to the government or society for institutional change, we must look to ourselves to dismantle our own individual miseducation. One way that I have found to be personally extremely effective is simply reading different perspectives, non-Eurocentric perspectives. Carter G. Woodson's The Miseducation of the Negro is one of the books that helped me dismantle my own miseducation and taught me more about the psychological effect of racism on black Americans in society. Joseph Heller's Catch-22, a novel from a divergent perspective to war, also helped me learn more about the different aspects of war instead of the usual patriotic approach that we take to it. Salman Rushdie's Harun and the Sea of Story a simple allegory about different problems occurring in India while on the surface just a story about a boy going through a hero's journey. Help me just broaden my perspective on different ways of life. A message for majorities. Self-education is necessary to understand the different perspectives within our own society. If you want to understand the current tensions, take the initiative and look. For minorities. Society will never be able to teach us to fully love ourselves because the bias towards the majority will always exist. Self-education is necessary for our sense of self and self-pride. For black Americans and Africans like me. Without self-education, we will hear about Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and know about them to an extent. But we will always hear about Malcolm X as that violent black man that hated white Americans. We will rarely hear the names of Sada, or Marcus Garvey, or Kwame Krumah. We will never learn about the African innovations that have been pivotal for human society today. We will not learn that Africans instigated the idea of trial by jury, an idea championed by Americans today, or that Africans had the first domesticated animals, the first stringed instruments, and were the discoverers of iron, and many more. I personally would still be seeing the negative negativity in my own race, in myself, in my essence, in my culture. When I was in the second grade and introduced myself as Ali Matudemba to my second grade teacher, he looked at me and said, oh, that might be too long and I don't know if I can pronounce it, so I think I'm going to call you Ali. And at the time, I was so excited, though I didn't know why. And I didn't understand my mother's anger when I came home and told her that I was Ali now. Despite her anger, I carried on with that name, with that persona, for most of my years at Flint Hill. I didn't think much of it until I began to get asked, which one do you prefer, Ali or Ali Matu? And immediately I'd answer Ali. Sometimes these individuals would go further and ask, why do you prefer Ali? And most of the time, all the time, I would answer, I don't know because it's just what I had been doing and what I had been called, and I didn't have a problem with it. And I grappled 
with this question, why did I prefer Ali over Ali Matu for so long? And my main excuse was that different friends of mine, different peers of mine also had nicknames. So there was no harm, except when my peers and I would be receiving awards, they'd get referred to as their full name and I would still be called Ali, Ali Demba. Or when we receive official documents and things where everyone's full name was printed on it, on it Ali Demba was printed on mine. And without self-education, I wouldn't have realized later on that I am not Ali. And that the reason I was so excited initially to be called Ali was because I was one step closer, one step more in tune with those around me, one step closer to fitting in with the individuals I thought I needed to fit in with. Recently, my mother told me that in Gambian culture, families name their children after individuals who they want to embody seven traits that these individuals have. Not only does the name Ali Matu embody the seven beautiful traits of my beautiful grandmother, but it embodies the beautiful, the billions of beautiful traits that my culture embodies, that my race embodies, that my differentness embodies. Without self-education, I would still be Ali. With self-education, I know that I never was Ali, and that I'm Ali Matu, Ali U, Badara, Keba, Pa, Madi, Demba. And there is beauty in that differentness, in that length, in that essence. What do I want to see in 20 years? In 20 years, I want life to stop being a Spike Lee joint with the dissension and the misunderstandings and the miseducation. But even more so, I want us to understand and acknowledge why life was a Spike Lee joint for so long in the first place.